about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about my mansion. I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I need to go there someday, I know. And after I reach that heavenly city, I need to know more than I know now. He promised me his soul ascended. I'm coming back, the Lord did say. If on his promise you've depended, on wings of love I'll fly away. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive. As my reward, I want to know more about that land. I'm going to go there someday, I know. And after I reach that heavenly city, I need to know more than I know now. Uh, we have somebody that we can lean on that just through trials and tribulations and we lose a loved one it's hard i'm glad that we have somebody that we can rely on we can lean on you know what the bible says over in proverbs says lean on me just along with all thy heart and lean on all understanding. We need to lean on the Lord. Just thank him for glad we're his children. Just lean on him. I could not pay 
I had no hope, no other way than in despair. I called upon my Savior's name. Down on my knees, the answer came. I felt the touch, I felt the change. He made a walk in, talk in miracle today. A walk in miracle. A walk in miracle. So she has reached. Way down a sin and he rescued me. He took the blame and he bore my pain. And I've never been the same. So she has made a walk in miracle of me. He called a Lazarus out of the grave. He made the crippled man walk away. He healed the deaf and dumb, touched the blind man and made him see. And like the miracles he did back then, he went down all over again. He made a walk and talk and miracle of me. A walking miracle, a talking miracle. So she has reached way down to sin and he rescued me. He sucked the blame and he bore my pain. And I've never been the same. So she has made a walking miracle of me. It might as well pay all back here, hun. I may have lost it somewhere, eh, man? Hey, man. All right, Zachariah. Zachariah chapter. Oh, thank you. You brought it to me. Lady. I'm sorry, brother. Hey, I got it, hun. Okay. Hey, man. Zachariah chapter 4, verse 10. And, uh, if you'll turn to Matthew, that's one of those books that doesn't get read much, but if you turn to Matthew go back two books, you'll be in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10, and uh, I'm going to read just a small portion of that verse, matter of fact, the first little phrase in that verse, and uh, last few Thursday nights we've been looking at the Word of God and studying the Word of God, and, and uh, I'm real big on expository, that's going down through verse by verse, and uh, reading it and studying it in the context of the Scripture. But today we go look at uh, we go do a little topical study, a little topical preaching, if you will. And the topic uh, of uh, our study is little things, little things. And so we'll turn in eight places in Scripture today. And uh, I've cheated a little bit. I've already got my eight places marked. And and so if you don't catch up with us, don't you don't worry about it. You write it down, put it in the back of your memory bank, go back and look at it. And uh, but we're gonna look at little things today here in just a minute. But Zechariah chapter four and verse ten. Uh, as you're turning there, just refreshing our memory, uh, last uh, Sunday evening, uh, we preached on small things that God uses. Small things that God uses. And we looked at the widow lady that cast in her two mites. That's all she had. And uh, Jesus told his disciples, to look at the rest of the crowd. They're putting in out of their abundance, but this lady's given all that she had. Uh, you know, that's all the Lord's asked of us, no matter if we've got little or much. He's just asked us to uh, let him have it. And that's not talking about giving all your finances. Up, but that's talking about whatever the Lord lays on your heart, giving time and uh, just Lord letting us, uh, letting us, the Lord have us. And Bible says in Romans chapter twelve, uh, well, He asked for a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And that little lady was willing to give it all to Jesus, and what a blessing that was! It's amazing how God can take small things and do great things with it. And then we looked at the little boy there; he had five loaves and two little fishes. And wound up feeding over 5,000 people. And uh, can you imagine the stories that that man, that boy, if he lived long enough, that he was able to tell his grandchildren about when Jesus moves in, how he can take a little, make a lot out of it. Matter of fact, at the end of that, he told them to get them some baskets to take up the fragments. And I don't know about y'all, usually when I, like my wife and I, took her to eat at 13 Bones this week, and uh, I didn't eat as big as box as I did when I started out. 
But when you go with the Lord and you give him little, thank God he'll multiply and your box is a lot bigger than what you come with. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. And so we looked at God blessing little things. And man, I'm excited because God can bless little things. You look at the country, Israel. And uh, Israel has always been able to hold its own, although it's been a small country and a small little group of people. You know why? Because that's God's people. Amen. And uh, so God can take small things and do great things with it. I'm amazed at uh, the Lord taking a handful of people at Shining Light Baptist Church and getting on board with some things. And because of that, we've, uh, we're, we're in the process of the things that we're doing here at True Light Baptist because of a handful of people over there and, and a handful of people that wanted to come here. And uh, now we've got a uh, mission work that has started next door and uh, men's mission. I appreciate them taking care of that. appreciate Caleb and Sarah being with us today. And I've been in here off the road and may time down for a little while. And I appreciate what Jamie's doing. But because of little small things, uh, we're going to see great big things from God. And so you don't have to be huge for God to bless and God to use. As we look here in the verses of Scripture, in Zechariah chapter 10, like I said, I'm going to read the first phrase of that or the first sentence. And it says this, For who have despised the day of small things? See, a lot of times we take for granted the small things. We're always looking for big things and, and uh, we overlook the small things. We're looking for the big blessings and we overlook the small blessings. And, and uh, friend, it's not always that we go get huge blessings. We may just get a bunch of little blessings. And isn't that, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Amen. I remember going out through the parking lot one day. My daughter was real little, and somebody had evidently come out and had a handful of pennies when they come out of, I believe it was at Walmart, and just evidently throw them right up in the air. Well, I don't know about you, but it's a blessing me to find them little brownies laying on the ground because last time I went to school, and uh, I was taught that a 100 of those little brownie pennies adds up to a dollar. And uh, so, man, I come out, I was uh, picking them things up. My daughter's like, Daddy, what are you doing? I said, I'm picking up blessings. Amen. And uh, it don't matter to me if they land on heads and tails. I'm not superstitious, amen. And, uh, hey, I, I feel like if you want to go on the lucky side of things, I feel like if I find a penny, no matter what side it's on, I've been blessed, amen. And so a lot of people overlook that. Man, I'll tell you, they'd stop and pick up a handful of quarters in a minute. Amen. I, I, I'm trying to get us to see what the Bible's talking about here. We, if we've seen a handful of quarters cast out, you'd have to, you'd have to rush in there to beat everybody out. Dollars or a handful of hundreds, man. I, they'd run in there, but they overlook those little pennies. But when you start adding those little pennies up, it starts adding up pretty quick. Amen. I, I got a, 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 a big old thing there at the house. Not a big old thing, but a little toolbox was made at Bible school years ago. A little wooden toolbox. I've got that thing full of pocket change and, I come in, I'll cast that stuff in there. I got my, I got a man's bathroom at home. I don't know if y'all know what that means, but that means his screwdriver's laying up there, his vice grip's laying up there. That's mine and Cam's bathroom, and his pocket change laying everywhere and receipts laying everywhere. But if I took all that change, and a lot of people would just throw it away, don't worry about it. But when you start stacking that stuff up and start putting it up, it winds up adding up to a whole lot. And I'm afraid that's the way we are as children of God also. We overlook the little things. The Bible says, therefore, who have despised the day of small things? And, and uh, I, I want to thank God for the small things in life. Thank God for what He does for us. Thank God for the little small blessings that come along the way that wind up adding up to big blessings. So we go spend a little time today. That won't be too awful long, but we're going to spend a little time looking at little things in the Bible. I want to start off with, I want to give you two things that we need to make sure that we look for, the little things, and one of them is in Solomon uh, chapter 2 and verse 15. Solomon chapter 2 and verse 15. A couple of these little things ain't a blessing. Amen. A couple of these little things that I'm going to mention first, we need to stay away from. We need to be real careful about it and uh, keep an eye on it, if you will, and uh, watch and make sure that we maintain. But Solomon chapter 2 and verse 15 it says this, take us the foxes, the little, listen to what it says, we're preaching on the little things, the little foxes that spoil the vine, for our vines have tender grains. You know, and what's that a picture of you say, well, let me give you a little background on foxes. Foxes are real sly. Everybody in the trapping world, you know, we do a lot of wildlife control. Everybody's wanting to know how to catch a coyote, catch a coyote, catch a coyote. Well, I, I'll be honest, if you can catch a red fox, you can catch a coyote. In our neck of the woods, honestly, this way I think, but just my experience with it, I believe if you can catch a red fox in our community and in our area, you can catch about anything you want to. 
because those little red foxes, they're sly, they're good at what they do. Uh, they're very deceptive. They'll ease in in the midst of the night. And the next thing you know, they'll be done cleaned your chicken house out. Amen. They can climb fences. They can dig out holes under fences. They'll grab them little chickens and they'll run on their merry way. And before you know it, you don't have any chickens left. And that little sly fox has done run off somewhere. So foxes can cause a lot of damage. And uh, we have people all the time say, well, why do you trap those pretty little things? Well, I, I know everybody ain't on board with that and understand that. But if you don't keep them under control, they'll wreak havoc if you've got any livestock. They'll wreak havoc if you've got things around like chickens and eggs and uh, guineas and turkeys and all those things. you got to keep a check on it. Well, in our life, spiritually speaking, we've got to keep an eye on those little foxes because they are the things that wind up spoiling the vine. Those little foxes wind up over a period of time, wind up having more foxes, and that's the way it is in mind your life. If we don't watch, we let little things begin to creep back into our spiritual life and the next thing you know, that fox is beginning to take over. I, I was reading one time and seeing on a church sign, it says if you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. Amen. I also read another church sign, says you give the, a devil an inch, he'll become your ruler. Y'all get that here in a little bit. Amen. Those little rulers, I don't know if y'all remember or not, but those little rulers that whenever I'd, I'd get in trouble in school, they'd bend my hand like that and wire it out about 12 inches long. That's one of the worst whippings you ever get in your life. I don't know what it is right across there, but boy, it tires some stuff up. Amen. And so we got to be real careful not to let, uh, let let these little foxes ease in. You say, what are you talking about? You put a little something in front of your eye that ought not be there. To start off with, you don't say, you think, well, it's not that bad. Well, the next thing you know, a month, two, three, four, six months later, you done got a lot of little foxes done eased in and done ruined your testimony, amen? And so we see things like that, or, or maybe it's uh, something to do with a little uh, little booze or a little liquor or, or, or something along those lines. You say, well, a little bit's never going to hurt anybody. That's what the alcoholic said. A little bit's never going to hurt anybody. Next thing you know, that little fox is done eased in, and those foxes wind up getting control of you in your life. And those sexual immorality, that sexual immorality, those sins that are still in the Bible, that is a sin, and you let that ease in just a little bit. You start out with just a little sugar. Oh, that's innocent, is it not? I'm still, you say, you can call me what you want to, call me old fashioned whatever. I still believe it's not good for a man to touch a woman until they get married. Amen. And I believe that's sugar and all. Say, so, well, you probably kiss that before you while you was dating. Yeah, I was a lost man too, but I got some different convictions and stuff than I used to have. Amen. And I believe when you lay lips on it, you better be on the marriage altar. Amen. That's not good for a man to touch you, but you let those little uh, sexual immorality, those little sexual foxes ease in. Next thing you know, they done took you down a road. You had no idea that you was going down. That's what happens a lot with these little young ladies and stuff. That's why we've got a lot of babies out of wedlock and all these other things. And I'm not beating anybody up. God will forgive anything if you come to him. And I, I remember being in a home one time. She was mad at a church. I said, why are you mad at a church? And, and uh, she'd had a baby and uh, wasn't married. And, and uh, so she said, somebody had said something. I said, ma'am, I said, what you need to do, you need to ask God to forgive you for that. It is still wrong, but then you need to thank God for the blessing that you got in the midst of it. Amen. I don't know no other way to explain that. And, and so we got to watch these little sexual foxes that come in. They'll begin to bite. They'll begin to devour them. And next thing you know, you got a bunch of them in your life. Sexual immorality has ruined more marriages than probably anything you can think of. Matter of fact, sexual immorality, we're talking about little foxes. It wound up ruining David's life. He was up on a rooftop looking out across there and a, a lady caught his eye. And we know the account, Miss Bathsheba. And he looked on her and started desiring. He said, y'all bring her to me. And because of that, he wound up, uh, had a baby and wound up with her, her pregnant, wound up in adultery, wound up having her husband killed and wound up, excuse me, paying for that all his life after that. You got to watch these little foxes at ease him because they will destroy the vines. Amen. Next thing you know, you'll wind up a fox average about five little ones a year. If you don't take control of that little fox in your life, you'll start out with one. Next thing you know, you'll have six. Next thing you know, the next year you'll have 11. And it's just a, it's a vicious train effect. It's a vicious cycle. But be careful of those little foxes in your life because they will destroy you. Amen. I tell you some of the most vicious things. Coyotes ain't as vicious as red foxes are. We deal with them a whole lot. And I tell you, it's a whole lot easier to get a coyote out of a trap live than it is a red fox. It's amazing to me, you can put those coyotes and foxes in the same aluminum dog box. It's got a petition down the middle. And those foxes, if you leave them in there long enough, they'll about chew the aluminum side off and the coyotes won't hardly even bite at anything. 
You got to watch those little foxes. Amen. Now, if you will, let's turn on over to the New Testament, James chapter 3. And we're talking about those little things. Now, that's something you ought to despise. You ought to despise those little foxes that come around and want to destroy your life. They ease in. They creep in unknowing. But then once you know they're present, that's when you better take care of them. They'll ease in that chicken coop at night, and they'll ease in unknowing. But once you get out there and you start seeing the destruction they caused at night, you better go ahead and be ready to take care of it. Amen. Now, the next little thing I want you to look at, man, I tell you, it gets us all in trouble. Those little foxes get us in trouble, but this little thing right here get us in a lot of trouble too. James chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Your little tongue may be a small body part, but boy, it sure has caused a lot of destruction in life. Brother Doss has been teaching and preaching on some of this stuff on Tuesday nights. It's amazing to me how much trouble that tongue will get you into. Man, we all time running off at the mouth. We all time saying things we ought not be saying. And when we're saved by God's amazing grace, we ought to be God-led and realize that we're going to hold account for everything that we say. And man, that's scary to me because I do a lot of rattling off sometimes. Amen. But that tongue will get you in trouble. The Bible says it's a little member, but it boasts great things. That tongue is like, when you're running off at the mouth, you and I, that tongue is like a shotgun blast. Once you pull the trigger, it's already done the damage. And you can't go get it back. All you can try to do is repair what's been done. Amen. We got to be real careful this little tongue. I, I imagine this tongue has tore up more marriages than probably anything else. Probably more than sexual immorality has, just to be honest. Because that, that tongue and uh, down-talking your spouse and belittling them and uh, not honoring them in the way they ought to be probably has killed a whole lot of marriages. And if they didn't separate it, at least killed the love that's in the home. Amen. You know, that tongue there, the Bible says, you know, we, we not in the Bible, but we heard growing up, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie straight out of hell. I've been hurt a lot by words along the way. And I've had my feelings hurt along the way because of something somebody said. I remember the first time I, I got my feelings hurt real bad in school. I was the littlest guy in school. Somebody's heard me say this before. I was the littlest guy in school. Well, the teacher aide didn't mean nothing by it. But, she, but what she said hurt my feelings. She said, where did you get them little brogans at? That's the cutest little things I've ever seen. Right there lined up going to lunch in, in front of God and 20 some other kindergarten. Me being a little guy, she talking about how cute my little brogans were. Well, kindergarten, I didn't want to be cute. I wanted to have the big brogans. Amen. Y'all know what I'm saying. And so those words, actually, they, they hurt my feelings. And man, I, I, I'm carrying that 45 years old. That's been 40 years ago. Amen. But I still remember that being said. And, and we've got to be careful with what we say. We've got to be mindful that our tongue may be a small member of our body, but it sure can be a big problem to us. I believe it's a lot of churches been torn down because of the tongue. I remember... A guy come here and he wanted to talk to me. I could tell he was mad and and uh, he wanted to go around out here in front and had some guys standing out here and it's amazing how people talk to you rougher when people's around. I said, sir, if you don't mind, let's step around side the church and I said, man, you'll talk around there. And he had his gun on his hip, man. He's walking around like this gun on his hip. He wanted to make sure everybody's seen that and all this, that, and us. We went around side the church and... Uh, so anyway, he got to talking about some lady in this church had been talking bad about him. Well, he don't live a good life to start off with, so if anything was going to be said about him, it was going to be bad regardless. And so he's a fuss for me and carrying on and this, that, and other. And, and uh, so anyway, I said, well, who are you talking about? And he named the lady's name. And I said, sir, I said, you better get your junk straight. I said, that lady has never graced the doors of this church. And here you are down here fussing with me about it and probably done said something to everybody in the community you've come in contact with that some lady down here running her mouth about you. And said, and I said, she ain't never been in here. I said, so if you go run your mouth, you better make sure you got your facts right. And so on, he went on, got in his little truck and left. Our tongue, if we don't watch it, get us in trouble. But then it's in, the, in the house of God, we got to watch our tongue to get us in trouble. I was doing pest control on a church one time, and uh, they had the deacon meet me over there. And I told this, it ain't been too long ago, they had the deacon meet me over there. And to that deacon, I was just a bug man. And that's fine with me. I don't go around bragging that I'm a preacher, but boy, when God opens the door up, I let people know that I know the Lord. Amen. 
So we're going around there, and just almost instantly, he started bad-mouthing the preacher in the church. Well, I know the preacher, and I know preachers can be bad. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but this was a good man. And so he's a bad man, that preacher at one side and down the other. And, and as far as he knows, I'm just a lost man. You hear what I'm saying? As far as he knows, I'm just a pest guy. I might even be lost coming to the church to do pest control. And he's bad man in the church and bad man in the preacher. You know the last place I'm going to want to go if I'm a lost pest control guy? It's going to be right there at that church. So after he got done, we spent about 45 minutes together. And almost the whole 45 minutes, that's what he's wanting to talk about, talk about, talk about. Well, when we got done, I said, yes, sir, I understand church got problems, but I pastor one. And I said, me and your pastor are pretty good friends. He turned about three shades of red, then he went blue, and then he turned sheep white. Amen. And I said, sir, I said, you know, you're sitting here as far as you knew. I'm just a lost pest control guy. And here you are talking bad about the church. Friend, I'm telling you, about, about two months later, he wound up splitting that church right down the middle. We got to be real careful about our tongue. These little members, look what it says. It's a little member, but both behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. That tongue, by if you read it, it says set on fire of hell. If we don't watch, our tongue will start a spark and then it'll just keep fanning it. It'll keep fanning it. It'll keep fanning it. And then when you get somebody else on board with it, they'll fan a little. Then that next and over there, they'll fan a little. It's amazing how people want to talk about bad stuff all the time, but when something good goes on, hardly won't talk about it. So we got to be real careful with these first two things. Those little foxes will mess your life up, but those little tongues will mess your life up, mess a whole lot of things up. So we got to make sure those are a couple of things we're talking about despising little things. Those are two things that we need to make sure we despise is an unruly tongue and unruly little foxes in our life. But James, if you will, turn to James chapter 4, go over one chapter to chapter 14, or chapter 4 verse 14. Look what it says here. And then we'll go, go back. A couple more chapters. Got just a handful of things I want to share with you. Why do we need to make sure we keep those little foxes out of life and keep our little tongue under control? Well, James chapter 4 and verse 14 says this, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth, look what it says, for a little time. Our time here on earth is short. It's very short. I've been two funerals this week. One of them like a grandpa to me. And it just seemed like a short time since I've come to know him. And it's been 20-some 20, 20 years since I've known this gentleman. But to me, his life has been short. We was talking, me and Brother Gary was talking, I think it was yesterday. I said this a while ago too. Everybody talking about how folks are living longer nowadays. And that ain't the case. In the last two years, I've preached more funerals for 40 and 50-year-old people than I have in the 17 years that I've been preaching. If you look at the obituaries, younger people, it's more you're, you're dying. People are dying younger nowadays than really they ever have in a long time. It's because of the world that we're living in. Our life is just here. It's like a vapor. It's here for just a little while, then it's gone. And you say, why is that important? Why? Why? Because you don't need to despise. You, you need to make sure you make the most of the little time that we have here. That's why we got to keep the foxes under control. That's why we got to keep our tongue under control because we just got a little time to make an impact here in this old world that we're living in for the cause of Christ, for the cause of Jesus, for somebody to see their need to get saved and live for the Lord Jesus Christ because it is just for a short period of time. My grandpa died at the age of 97 years old and he told me all his life, he said, I'm in my 90s, he said, but feel like I've been here for just a few days. And if a man at 90-some years old would tell you that, and I understand what he's saying now, he says the older you get, the faster time flies. My weeks now, my days used to feel like weeks when I was a little boy like Cam size, but now my weeks feel like days. Amen. And my months feel like weeks. You say, what are you saying? I see what Grandpa said. Time has seemed like it's in high gear right now. Time I wake up on Monday, We've done went through the week and hit Sunday, and we've done that another Monday before it seemed like we never turn around. So what am I saying? I said that we have a little space of time to make a difference for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you will, let's turn back a few chapters in Acts chapter 28 and verse 2. I told you we'll turn in eight places. We're almost half through. Well, this will be half through. Acts chapter 28 and verse 2. Uh, get rid of the little foxes. Keep that little tongue under control. Make the most of the little time that you have. And then in Acts chapter 28, verse 2, 
Now this is a bunch of heathens doing this. And if they will do it, why can't you and I do it? What are they doing here in Acts chapter 28 and verse 2? Listen to what it says here. And the barbarous people, that means rough. That means uncontrolled, if you will. Showed us no little kindness. That means that they didn't, don't mean they no kindness, but means they didn't hold nothing back to show them a little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. They'd been in a shipwreck, and Paul and them uh, was there. Paul was a prisoner. They'd been in a shipwreck, and these barbarous people seen that, and they wanted to show them some kindness because they seen them in a hard time. Now, if that crowd that didn't, if you read this right here, they didn't know Jesus. But if that crowd that didn't know Jesus was willing to show God's servant a little bit of kindness, how much the more should God's servants be willing to show another crowd some little kindness along the way? Amen. And so if the barbarous crowd can show little kindness, we need to show little kindness because of what happened here. Uh, man, it was a blessing to the apostle Paul. And it's amazing how God would take the outside world and take barbarous people to look after God's people sometimes. That's a blessing within itself. Amen. Uh, but if you wind up looking at this, it was good to Paul and them. And, and Paul was a helping them. He didn't want to just uh, let them look after him and not give back and not do nothing. So he went out. He, he helped get the wood in for the fire too. And the Bible says that a snake jumped on him and bit him. And, and they thought it was a murder. They thought it was a sign from God that that man ought to die. And then he shook that thing off in the fire. And they knew he should have died. They knew he should have had some hurt. But then if you read on down, they thought Paul said, man, this must be a God. And Paul had to wind up telling him, no, I'm not a God, but I can tell you about the God that looks after us. Amen. And so I'm saying all that to say this, the barbarous crowd that didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ until after this was willing to show a little kindness. How much more should Christians and a church and a house of God be willing to show some little kindness along the way? You never know. We're talking about a little tongue and a little member. You'll never know what a little kindness from your mouth will do for somebody else along the way. Amen. If you get out in this old world and you begin to look around, you begin to see people, they don't have smiles on their face. They don't have joy in their heart. I was at a register, ain't been too long ago, and I, was, I heard a young lady, this other girl walked by that worked there, and she was talking about her having a hard day. And when I walked up the register, I could see she just had, she had a, a, a bad countenance about her. She was sad. She was upset. And so the other lady walked off, and I began to talk to this young lady. And I, I said, ma'am, I, I said, I know we have bad days. And, and I was trying to encourage her. And anyway, long story short, I was just giving a little kindness, giving the, uh, taking my little tongue and trying to use it for a little kindness along the way. And but before we left her register, she was smiling and uh, saying, well, I know it's just it's something that we go through sometimes, and it's not all bad and all this, that, and other. Well, thank God. God, she went from a place to where she was uh, uh, under a little bit to being uh, up and uh, smiling before we ever left. And I'm not saying anything about us, but what I'm trying to get us to see, sometimes just a few small kind words will make a difference in somebody's life. Amen. I told Shining Light this morning about Brother Todd a few times. He called me several years ago. I was having bad days, and Brother Todd called me up and said, Man, I just had you on my heart. Just wanted to call and check on you. And man, I'm going to tell you, I can't, I, I can't even explain what those few little words and that little bit of kindness of a phone call did for me to lift me up, to get me on through that day. Amen. So I'm saying that barbarous crowd, if they can show a little bit of kindness to Paul and get Paul to the place he needs to be in those prisoners, how much the more should you and I that name the name of Christ show a little kindness along the way? I know we get aggravated with things along the way. I do. At least I do. If y'all don't, bless y'all's heart. Amen. But we're living in a world that's down and out, discouraged and depressed and more problems than the world's ever seen before, according to the studies that you look at. Not even Christian studies, not even church studies, but secular studies tell you that people's depressed, people's down and out. And if we could just say a little something and show just a little bit of kindness along the way to help somebody else, man, what a blessing that would be. I'm thinking about a guy right now, and, you know, we see a whole lot of folks out and, and uh, we get approached a lot, just to be honest, because we're out a whole lot. And uh, it's amazing the ones the Lord just let come up to you. But we're living in a, uh, we're living in a time now where people like just come up to you and they like to ask for, for money all the time. And uh, so, well, I need something to eat. And my deal is I always tell them, well, I'll take you and buy you something to eat. I've never had out of all, I can't count all the times, but I've never had it but twice to where they took me up on it. See, they was just wanting money. But I remember this guy down here at the, uh, uh, we pulled up down here at Hardy's in Madison. Little guy sitting on a corner post right there in the parking lot. And 
he wasn't asking for nothing. But I seen, I said, Lord, Lord, lay on my heart. I seen him in my mirror. I backed up where I could watch him in my mirror, and I was watching him. And uh, Luke was with me that day. And uh, I told Luke, I said, Luke, you go on in. I said, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check on this guy and see what, what's going on with him. And uh, so I walked down to where he was at, and I asked him, I said, sir, I said, uh, when's the last time you had something to eat? And he said, I don't remember. And uh, I said, uh, if you'll come in here, I'll get you something to eat. He said, no. He said, if you'll go in there and get me something, bring it back out, that'll be fine. I said, no, sir. I said, I'd love for you to come down and come in here and sit down with me to eat. And uh, I could I could pick up what he was what he was saying. He was ashamed to come in. He had tattered clothes on. His clothes was dirty. And once we got in there, what he ordered, I wound. I'm not saying nothing about us because I, I don't want God to take my reward, take my blessing away. But I'm just trying to tell you, showing a little kindness is what I'm trying to say. What he ordered, we got him two of those, and we sat there and we ate together. And he had a little smile on his face when he left that day, all because somebody showed him a little bit of kindness. There's no telling how many times he'd been walked by that day. No, no telling how many times somebody might have said something out of the way to him, mocked him, made fun of him. But they don't realize they could be the next one sitting on that little light pole out there with nothing to eat along the way. I seen that happen in Savannah, Georgia. A guy was down there. He was homeless. And some teenage boys come by and mocked and made fun of him and jumped at him. And I'm going to tell you what, if it hadn't been for the grace of God, I'd seen which one of them boys was uh, – uh, the stoutest, amen, and I, boy, I wanted to grab him too young, but I didn't. But anyway, we don't realize what just a little act of kindness can do to help somebody else along the way. You know, the Bible says we entertain angels on awareness. What that means is that God may send us an uh, angel by our way that may have the appearance of needing some help just to see or get us to see what we would do. You don't never know. What you're going to entertain. Amen. So a little bit of kindness. But then Matthew. We got three more places. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. It's a good time of year to show a little bit of kindness. But we ought not do it just on Christmas time. We ought to do it all the time. I tell you the biggest act of kindness. I told you some things I've done. But I I, I, I want to tell you about a man over it. I love him to death, and he, he, he wouldn't want nothing told whatsoever. Y'all hear me mention his name a lot, Mr. Elbert. Seventy-some years old. It's about 77, and he, he's, his, his mental capability is not real good. But I'm going to tell you what, Mr. Elbert shows kindness. He'd load his pocket down with cookies. Y'all heard me talk about it. He left over there one day. I don't know how many major sandwiches he had in his pocket. He left them over there, made her sandwiches and Ziploc bags in his pocket. And I said, Lord, help. I know they're feeding him over there. I said, if not, I'm going to find out what's going on over there at the assistant living. Well, he got out, and I backed up where I could watch him. And when he got out, he started passing out made her sandwiches and folks sitting out under the shelter. You know what that is? That's an act of kindness. That's a genuine act of kindness. And so then I'd watch him. He'd stuff his pocket full of cookies, and they wouldn't even be in those Ziploc bags. <laughs> so he'd stuff those pockets full of cookies, and he, when he get out up there, he'd start handing out cookies. And that's just who Mr. Elbert is. And and uh, he'd heard me mention something about a hat sometime or another. He got on the church bus one time, church van, and had a hat that uh, he, he wanted to give me. And uh, to be honest with you, probably anybody else wouldn't have took the hat. But I took it because I knew where it was coming from. It was coming from an act of kindness and it was coming from a kind heart. Amen. So showing an act of kindness. But then in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, if you've had time to turn there, said, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible. How about this kind goeth not out but by prayer? And the disciples couldn't cast out any of some demons. The healing of a demon-possessed boy was going on here. They couldn't do it. The Lord told them, says, Your faith is weak. You've got unbelief. He said, if you pray and fast and just trust, and he said, if you've got a small, a little amount of faith, there's a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be thou removed, and that mountain would get out of your way. That's not talking about removing hanging rocks so you get over cross there any faster. That's talking about obstacles in mind in your life that you and I are facing and going through troubles and trials and this, that, and the other. He'll give us exactly what we need to uh, press on for his honor and his glory. He'll give us what we need when we face obstacles over here at this men's mission and we're going to because we did here trying to get the church up and going. That means you can get to praying and have faith as a grain of mustard seed and God will fix that problem for you. Amen. I remember a certain situation here at this church. I went over there, I fussed, I argued, and man, I went over there ready to argue. I went over there like arguing.
begging. And you say, you're wicked. That's exactly right. You pray for us. Amen. Because I knew it was going to be a battle when I got there. And that never fixed until we got to praying about it. Brother Ronnie standing right back there one day. He said, Brother Cook, he said, you better get to praying because we're at a place to where we got to make a move on this situation. And we got to praying. And within just a couple days, God fixed that problem that we went over our fussing about, that we went over our arguing about, that we went over our try to strong mong about. And God fixed that problem in just a little bit within a few days of prayer. Amen. And so a little bit of faith. If you got a little faith, thank God. I'm glad we can see great things happen with God. Amen. And then we won't turn there, but 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 44, said they seen a cloud, a little cloud back there, sort of like a man's hand. Well, if y'all know the account in the scripture, it hadn't rained for a little over three years. Hadn't rained in a little over three years. And Elijah and them, man, and he was watching them prophets of Baal. They piled all that up out there and they was cutting themselves or crying and carrying on to their gods and they couldn't get the fire down, couldn't get that stuff caught on fire. And old Elijah, he said, hey boys, he said, y'all bring that water on over here. He said, we go, we go douse this thing down real good. And so they got to, uh, they used their water. And boy, I tell you, it takes faith if you ain't had no rain in over three years. It takes faith to pour your water out. Amen. I get a quart of water a minute in my well. I know what it's like to have to be sparing with water. Amen. I do take baths every day, so let's not go down that road. Amen. I know what it's like to have to be sparing with water, but they hadn't rained in over three years. And Elijah said, take and put that water on there, guys. And man, they started dousing that water on there. And they began to pray. And man, the fire fell. And the Bible says that flame even licked the water out of the ditches. They didn't leave none there. It burned everything up, burnt the rocks up, consumed everything that was out there because that was a God that Elijah served. Amen. And not too long, you see, he said they looked across there and they seen a little cloud over there, sort of like a man's and it didn't look like a big storm or anything coming but Elijah told him says boys y'all better go on he said not you ain't gonna get out of this bottom so to speak because it's fixing to start raining and so what he had he had a little bit of faith he seen a little bit of cloud and God blessed it amen and so in our life to apply that to our life we can see God's hand moving just a little bit but you can go ahead and mark her down when you see a little faith and you see a little bit of cloud coming and you see a little movement of God we don't know what's coming behind that and we find that man God moved through there and God done exactly what he said he was going to do and that's exactly what God will do around here too amen we see a bit, little bit of movement of the Lord you better go ahead and hold on because he's getting ready to bring a whole lot through with him amen and I'm glad when the Lord passes through he makes a difference but then also lastly but not leastly Revelation chapter Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8 a little bit of faith you can see God begin to move a little bit so God don't always move in big ways right to start off with Sometimes he'll send that little bit of cloud to go ahead and get you excited about what he's getting ready to do, just like he did in Elijah's time. All this stuff around here, man, it always seemed was a little, uh, a little, uh, a little cloud and a little God's promise. And now, man, I tell you, it's, it's a blessing to see what God's doing around here. Hey, man, Caleb and them, they burning the highways up, burning brakes up. Jamie and them's up in Richmond today. Uh, Spencer will be here uh, uh, five weeks this coming Tuesday. Amen. We got a couple more that's reached out to Jamie. They found out about the mission. Got got another's reached out to him about maybe possibly uh, talking about where to get him at. And if uh, you know not here, thank God it's been some contacts made that now we know more places than we did when we started where folks can go. That's what God's doing. That little cloud back there, you don't see all that's behind it, but thank God you know God's a moving and you know he's got some things coming your way. So how do you get it done? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. God ever give you something to do, you just don't think you'd be able to do it? Amen. Yeah. He said, I know thy works. I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. God will give you a little strength just to go through that door that he opens to you and I. I believe Samson, I, I believe when you look upon Samson, when we see, when we see him one day, because he was, he, was he was God's man, I believe that. He messed his life up. But I believe Samson, I believe when you looked at him, I don't believe it was just no big old guy that we think looked like a power lifter. I believe he looked like an ordinary man. Because if he did look like a power lifter and had all these big muscles and all this, that, and the other, then he, the people would say, well, that's where it all lies at. No. They'd look at him and say, wow, how does he get that done? So the only thing he had to brag on was God. And so you and I is a little bit of strength. 
we can get some great things done for God. I was I was looking at, I have stuff sent to me all the time for uh, for teaching literature and uh, uh, Sunday schools and children's church, all that. And just this week, I was looking at this. Um, it, it was like some lessons. And they had Jesus Christ, and they had him a body looking like the Incredible Hulk. And they had Samson on there looking like the Incredible Hulk. Then they had David looking like the Incredible Hulk. And I said, man, this is nothing to put in front of kids because that is not an accurate interpretation. The Bible says Jesus Christ had no comeliness about him, which means that he wasn't a real attractive person to start off with. Wasn't something to be desired. And, and so we look at this and, and man, this world's got their own ideas the way all this is supposed to work and supposed to be. But the Bible tells us right here, if God opens us a door, he'll give us a little strength. That doesn't mean we got to be great and mighty but he'll give us exactly the strength we need to step through that door that he's opened for you and I. And buddy, I'm going to tell you, going through them doors is not easy. But when you step through that door, the Lord's open for you. And you look back at that door a little bit later on, I believe you say, Phew, thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength to be where I'm at right now. Amen. And so as we look at these little things in the Bible and little things in mind in your life, please don't despise the little things. Next time you see a penny in the parking lot, just pick it up. Amen. You say, I remember that preacher preaching on little blessings in life and how they add up. Just pick them up. Pick them up along the way. Same way we live in this Christian life. Sometimes we get big blessings, but a lot of times we're getting them little small ones that we take for granted. We despise those little blessings. We want it all at one time. We, we're living in a world right now. These young people coming along, they want what you and I have worked all our life for starting out. Amen. We don't start out in this Christian thing having what people has been saved 30 and 40 years have far as we're concerned spiritually. I ain't talking about physical stuff now. I'm talking about spiritual things. We got to pick those little blessings up along the way as we go. And even after we get older in the spiritual life, in the Christian life, we still need to be picking those little blessings up along the way. We need to be grateful for them. need to be thankful for them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Miss Martin. She would. She'll come get us a little something on the piano. And uh, we'll stand all over the church house if you're able. Those little things, man, those first two, boy, you can definitely despise them. Those little foxes and that little tongue, you got to be real careful with it. But then that other, we need to realize that we just got a little time here. So we can show a little kindness, have a little faith, and see God working a little, and know he's bringing some big things in. But then just a little strength to press on for his honor and his glory. Those little things add up. Those little things add up. That change I've been saving for a long time now, I... I look at it time to time, and I wonder, I said, man, I wonder what I got in there. I don't know if any of y'all got a change yard like that. And you, I've been blessed. I don't, I don't necessarily need that financially, but I look at it, and I think I, I'm just curious of the blessings that's in there. What's that going to add up to? And I tell you what usually happens. Nine times out of ten, it's a whole lot more there than what you realize. When you go to counting, it winds up a lot more than what you realize. So when you go to counting your little blessings from God, you'll wind up with a lot more than you ever realized when we stopped to take count. Uh, Brother Gary and I, we, we used to take up at Shining Light. We called it Change a Child's Life. And we had a big old one of them water jugs that sat down here in front of the church. And them little youngins go, the, after we take offering up, them little youngins, they enjoyed going and getting everybody's pocket change. You say, what, you, is that, you teaching them to get money and stuff, this, that, and other? Well, just teaching people to give and teaching these youngins how things work. Amen. I used to tell them, I said, turn them upside down, kids. Shake them out, shake them out. Now, I'm just kidding, but they would bring that change. And there one year, uh, we'd always do summer camps, and uh, we would do some trips and this, that, and other. And that, that change that was taken up uh, through those months, that's what financed all that. And uh, I think one time me and Brother Gary went up, I don't remember, it was about $1,200, I believe it was, in that jug. When I looked at that jug, I was figuring about $800, talking about how little things add up. I was figuring it'd be about $800 in that jug, but it wound up being about $1,200 in that jug. So I was $400 off. So in our Christian life, when we start counting those little things, I promise you this, they'll add up to a whole lot more than what we ever anticipate. Amen. Amen. Those little things are good. Those little things are a blessing. I've always liked little things. I, I got a full-size truck out there, but you know what I enjoy driving? 